Hi, my name is Ray Bowdish. I'm the coordinator of the Weiser Center. Um, this center was built from money from our donors, uh, Robert Wagner and his wife Wendy. Uh, they had a clear vision for sustainability and applied learning where students could learn vocational skills uh, during their time here at Potsdam and have something that was separate from pure academics as a way to release stress and enjoy nature and learn a lot more about uh, the plants and animals in our environment. Uh, they themselves are advocates of sustainability, uh, avid gardeners, and put up their own food. So a lot of what they were inspired to give this center for is what we've done for our initiatives at the Weiser Center. Right here we're standing in the Weiser classroom and right now I'm standing in front of some things that were done last semester. We've got uh, some parsley uh, growing here along with some zinnias, just some experimental flowers and plants that they wanted to see which would grow in the uh, what would grow in our tower gardens. Okay, so these are aeroponic gardens. Water is uh, pumped from the bottom through the top, they cascade down, it could be grown in classrooms, uh, and we push these into classrooms uh, throughout the North Country as one of our initiatives, a tower garden in education. Uh, so this uh, room that we're in has in the back uh, a nice whiteboard. We've got a interface here. Currently, because we, we have the tower gardens, we have our rolling water in front of the, uh, the television that we normally use, but this is used for interactive uh, learning sessions with students. We'll often take uh, images from down in the greenhouse or outside and bring them in here and share them up. Uh, we have some of our faculty members will actually teach out of the space as well. And the space is pretty interesting because what you see here are made from materials that actually existed on campus. Uh, these were, in many cases, tables that were going to be thrown out during renovations and some of the old chairs that you see around here. We took them and reused them since we're a sustainability center. Uh, the woodwork you see over here especially has been actually uh, milled and finished by interns and volunteers with the Weiser Center. We've got some very interesting uh, teaching uh, props, prompts here uh, as these are infected pieces of wood, beech, and in some places you can actually see where the insects uh, have been entombed inside these tables. We can also teach about uh, the bark and how it grows here because these are live edge tables. So these are all local woods, maple, um, beech, uh, cherry, and so forth, and students use these as uh, workstations uh, between classes and it's, a, it's an open um, computer center as well as a classroom space. Uh, but there's been a very community, very much a community effort that's been put into this, including uh, Dr. Uh, Walter Conley, who donated all these beautiful prints that are uh, framed here. Uh, he's a collector of such prints and wanted these for in here and it really dresses up the space. So a lot of thought went into how to put this together and we knew we had to have the Weiser Center greenhouses, which we're gonna visit soon, uh, connected. And this classroom is in Stoll Hall and allows, a, allows students to wander through the halls of Stoll and see the Weiser Center and come on in. All right, and like um, normal, I would say, uh, unlike the pandemic, our normal situation is Students can come in here, it's an open public space. Even, even folks from the community can come into the Weiser Center. Um, we've got a lot of little projects going on, uh, and so it's kind of uh, disheveled in here at the moment. Um, but a lot, most of the plants that you're gonna see today have been donated um, by either alumni or uh, members of the community or folks who've been on campus, um, faculty members and staff members who maybe left campus or had plants that they wanted to donate. Um, so we're heading from the classroom area down into the link area. Even the signage that we have down here has been created locally. Uh, and the wood here, this bench is actually donated by a local craftsman, the same person who helped us mill those up there. Um, to get into the link area for, for some folks and for when we have equipment, we use the uh, lift here. Um, and stairway for uh, normal traffic. The link area also features the public entrance, which is over here to the right, which is going to be developed in the coming years into uh, garden space. And uh, right outside the window here, we're hoping to have a, a roof and patio area. 
so that we can welcome, welcome folks uh, straight from the outdoors. So that's up and coming. Okay, we'll enter here through Greenhouse One. Greenhouse One is um, an interesting place because it is open to the public. Often we have events like Yoga in the Greenhouse here. It's another initiative that we've had, part of the Wellness Initiative. When you're walking through here, understand that normally this place does not look like the crowded jungle that you're seeing right now. Normally, it's rather open in the middle. Normally, the towers you see over here uh, to your right uh, would be filled with plants or at least be growing something for the local Pacey's, um, for our dining services in Pacey's. Uh, that's another initiative. The Campus Urban Farmer is an intern that will come in and um, grow all kinds of greens in these towers, mainly lettuce or chard and so forth. And they grow, harvest, and deliver the plants to our Pacey's Catering Services. Uh, and they're also fe featured in Dexter's Cafe and Bistro. Um, so it's a really unique experience for students to be able to come in and actually grow food as if they were a farmer and move on. Um, we've got another initiative too around plants uh, called the Pet Plants Initiative. Uh, that's where folks will get small plants and we'll uh, send them over to uh, mental health services. And folks who are struggling with depression or anxiety often have trouble with their own care. And one of our students in psychology realized that giving them pet plants, which they could have on campus, would give them an object to externalize care to and be part of their therapy. So we've been able to do that with, um, when we were up and running with SUNY Potsdam and with Clarkson's campus. So students are propagating plants and those plants are going to mental health services on campuses and helping people to get through the uh, mental health issues that they have. Now, as you walk through here, realize what you're seeing is a result of the pandemic. We had to take all of the plants from around campus and bring them here so that I was able to take care of them. Otherwise, they'd be spread around through the winter. So that has some ramifications, some, some problems with it. Uh, we did bring a lot of pests together that we normally would not have uh, brought together. Um, but that's actually opened up a learning opportunity. And we have interns that have come in and used integrated pest management strategies, or IPM, to control pests in the greenhouse, and also our name is the Wiser Institute for Sustainability and Ecological Research. So without having some of the pest insects, we wouldn't have a way to teach about the herbivory that takes place with these insects feeding on plants. Moreover, we bring in, we buy in biological controls that we release on these plants and then those insects will often attack, or mites in some cases will attack the pests that we have in the greenhouse. So it's a wonderful little laboratory for students to learn how um, we can control pest populations and pest problems using uh, biological controls and natural methods versus using chemical controls and uh, commercial methods. So Greenhouse One has an environmental control box that I just bumped my head into. This little box right here is pretty important. It's constantly bringing air in through the front and pushing it out the back. And it's reading the relative humidity and the temperature. And with that information, there's a computer that controls curtains up above, uh, ventilation systems, fans, and even uh, water misting systems uh, can be controlled through the uh, greenhouse. Uh, if you take a look through here, you can see a greenhouse into greenhouse two. I'm not gonna take you in there, but that greenhouse is where students do their projects. We have class uh, work going on. So if classes have experiments running, they'll be running in that, that greenhouse over there. So that's really not a public space. Uh, greenhouse one is the public space. Um, before I leave the greenhouse, there, one thing that most people wanna know about are the, uh, you know, the tower gardens and, and what we do with them and how we use them and so forth. Uh, it's a pretty interesting system. If you take a look over here, this large tank, I'll move this plant out of the way. This large tank here is filled with water and nutrients. Water comes through a filter and to a pipe. And then on the pipe, there are small leaders and they feed 
these tanks through these ports right here. So we'll twist it around so that we plug the white the white tube plugs right into here. And so what basically ha happens is water will gravity feed to all of these reservoirs. Inside of the tower garden there are water pumps. You can see the electric electricity here. I'll move this out of the way. You guys can take a look. And uh, in the base of this, if you want to, I don't know if you can swing in here and get a, a shot of it, all the pieces you can see, there's a pump laying there and it hooks to that blue tube. And uh, there's a little float in here as well. And the float, when it's full, doesn't require, any, uh, doesn't call for any water. And as the water goes down, gravity feeds water into these. So we're able to grow a small farm of greens and vegetables for Pacey's Dining Center. So before I leave you, a couple things I want to mention about the future. The Wagners have agreed to develop the site around the Weiser Center. So there are big plans ahead. Uh, we're looking for uh, garden spaces on campus, including some that are outdoors right now, uh, wildflower pollinator gardens that we've started on campus. Um, we're moving forward on moving a community garden from its current location in Lehman Park to one that's more uh, obvious and near the road. And we're turning that original Cecily Garden into an apiary. We've got beehives and pollinator plants planted all around the beehives in the hope that we can have a campus apiary for the years to come. So along with some funding from Alcoa that's going to allow us to do some workshops, we're hoping to develop a community garden, really a Cecily Garden on steroids uh, for, for folks who are familiar with it. The Cecily Garden was started by students uh, back in the early 2000s, and its purpose is to grow food that would be used to reduce food insecurity, provided to food pantries and other outlets. Um, it's my hope that we can move forward and have a truly community garden space that not only grows for food insecurity, but allows families to move in and have plots and spaces uh, and interact in a, in a space that is truly meant for uh, feeding themselves and feeding other people in the community. Uh, I've had the good fortune of traveling around the country and even to Canada to investigate these community gardens, so we have a lot of really great examples to follow. But I think Potsdam, especially after the pandemic, uh, is ripe for a uh, community garden, an active, visible community garden, and I would be proud to have one on SUNY Potsdam's campus. So those are some of the things that we're looking forward to. Um, another initiative I didn't mention that I should mention is the plant sales uh, that the Biology Club and Environmental Science Club have put on in the past. Uh, students come in and the, we have events. They learn how to propagate plants. Um, the folks in the Wiser Center, the interns and the Wiser uh, volunteers, grow those plants throughout the semester. And then these clubs put on a sale at the end of the semester, and they've been very successful uh, in, in raising money uh, that way. So with the support that we've been getting through the Wiser Center, uh, folks have been donating to the Wiser Center, to the, the campus funds, has, have been really important during the pandemic. We were able to actually buy some supplies that helped us with uh, pest control issues. Um, so when you think about supporting uh, the campus, think about supporting uh, the Wiser Center as well. I think it's, it, it's important for us to um, develop sustainability curricula across campus, but also have an outlet for our community uh, to investigate ecology, sustainability, and uh, curbing global, uh, excuse me, curbing climate change, global climate change. So that's it, any questions? <laughs>
We have these willows, and these come from, uh, happens to be part of my research program, uh, program on uh, biofuels, but we use these uh, willows in plant physiology this spring. We had students on campus in lab. We also had students off campus in lab also. And so people on campus work with people, students off campus. But these willows were part of a growth experiment. And we're keeping them because next week we're hoping to get over to the uh, SUNY Potsdam daycare. And we're going to plant these in a big circle and we're going to make a little hut out of them. And so in a couple of years, the kids at the daycare will be able to play in a house initially grown by SUNY Potsdam students as part of our class, our plant physiology class. So um, we have about 90 of these things that we're hoping to transplant next week. We've kept them alive till now. Um, and and they, they are shedding a few leaves, but they'll, they'll grow just fine. We have lots of different things in here. We have some propagation uh, studies going on. Uh, we have some research experiments going on. I've got some uh, pomegranates. Uh, these are uh, about a year old. These are not endemic to upstate New York. Uh, in Greenhouse One, we have about uh, 10 uh, pomegranates that are about five years old. So we're, I think, SUNY Potsdam is the largest pomegranate orchard in the state of New York. Um, it's all inside, but and one of these days, we hope to get some pomegranates off them. We also grow lots of other interesting things. We have a few cacti from various parts of the country. We have a cactus that was collected in North Carolina. We have a couple of cacti that were collected in California. Uh, we like this little fuzzy cactus here. You can actually pet it without getting uh, pricked by any of the spines. This one we don't touch. It's very, very sharp. We, um, on the uh, uh, east side over here, we have a propagation system where we have misters that can come on. So students will plant seeds. And so some of the, you saw the garden towers earlier, and many of those seeds, seedlings are grown on these tables. These misters will come on every 15 minutes. We don't have to water by hand, it's all automatic. So it's a very nice system to get lots of plants growing very easily. Uh, we don't have a system in here, but we were growing microgreens on burlap. And we had a nice table like this. Uh, we had a frame where you could grow, put the burlap, get it wet, put your green seeds on, germinate them for a couple of days. The, the roots go into the burlap. You could take that whole table, flip it up, and flip it around, plant seeds on the other side of the burlap so we could grow microgreens on both sides of a vertical table, essentially. Uh, we're not limited by horizontal space in here. We're thinking, how can we grow things vertically? We have lots of nice light up above us, so we're trying to figure out new ways to grow plants vertically to increase, essentially, our floor space. Uh, how do we keep things cool? We imagine that we're in a cold climate, but in the summertime, it gets really hot in here. Even when it's only 80 degrees outside, the greenhouses, it's a greenhouse effect. It traps heat very well. So we do have some coolers in here. We can run water through those coolers, and that act, uh, acts as an evaporative cooler, cooling system to keep this uh, nice and cool in here. We have shades that uh, automatically, curtains up above, that will automatically uh, get rolled out when it gets too warm. When it cools off, the shades then collapse back down. So we have a lot of automation in here, so we don't have a lot of hand labor, which really helps us that we don't have to have someone in here every day, all day, monitoring the systems. So it's a very um, modern uh, facility uh, where students get to learn on how to propagate plants, grow plants, and think about new ways of growing plants. It's great to go out and throw things in the soil out in your yard. I have a garden at home. I just planted some stuff last night. Uh, but in our climate up here, how can we get fresh produce in the middle of winter that we don't have to ship from Florida or we don't have to ship from California? 
And you can grow an amazing amount of stuff in a pretty small space. And so we're trying to maximize the efficiency of those growing uh, systems. Hi everyone, so I'm Lucas Hans. Uh, I was an intern here at the Greenhouse from about two, 2018 to 2021. I'm fresh an alumni. I just graduated this uh, spring semester with a degree in environmental studies. And I'm excited to show you what I've done here as a student in the Greenhouse. So um, one of the things that I did last semester is I did IPM, also known as Integrated Pest Management. So as Ray was saying earlier, I uh, took care of various pests in the greenhouse. I introduced things like biological controls, that'd be like your classic ladybugs and praying mantises, things like that. And I also made sure to trim plants accordingly so pests wouldn't be able to spread very easily on them. Uh, but I also did tons of other things. Like I seeded all of these wildflowers that you see here. Uh, they're gonna be going out by, uh, we have a beehive that Laura, another intern is taking care of. So she's gonna be uh, taking care of that. We have nice flowers for her bees. These are also gonna be going in a wildflower garden just outside the greenhouse. I also have propagated a bunch of different plants here and um, things like these nice geraniums uh, that are actually gonna be going out on campus. Uh, at some point, the facilities are going to be planting these up, hopefully in the fall. Another thing that I've just kind of done in the stretch of my Potsdam career, um, a lot of people know, know me as like the cactus man, and uh, my job was to take care of and propagate a lot of the cactuses on campus. So here's one of my favorites. This is a, called a trumpeting cactus. Um, it might not look like one, but it is one, and they live on um, trees in South America. So these actually live in, and thrive in like wet environments like the jungle. Uh, which kind of brings me to my next point. Because of my time here at the Weiser Center, I was able to fulfill like big long-term projects like this. And I wouldn't, I, originally I probably would not have stayed at SUNY Potsdam, but I eventually made my way to the Weiser Center and this is where I made my home. So uh, I just want to thank the Wagners and other donors for be able, being able to uh, give me this kind of opportunity to pursue long-term projects and develop leadership skills. I really appreciate it.